Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Entrepreneurship Matters. My name is Alicia Wilson, Vice President for Economic Development for Johns Hopkins University and Johns Hopkins Health System. And it is my pleasure to introduce you to two of the biggest names in the apparel business, Justin Shaw and Sunny Lee. I'm gonna invite them to come on screen, set us up for an amazing conversation today and uh, also give you their bios, but not do justice to it. That's why we're gonna have this amazing conversation. We know that successful entrepreneurs, successful businesses are not built in a day. It takes a long-term commitment, a lot of grit, multiple failures to make it happen. And these two entrepreneurs that are being featured today are no different. Let me first introduce you to Justin Shaw of Shaw's Covenant Custom Clothier. Justin Shaw Clothier, Christian, published author, philanthropist, and influencer. Justin, you have like five titles. He launched Shaw's Covenant LLC in 2017. Growing up in Baltimore, he struggled with his identity surrounded by the promotion of the inferior nature of men of color. In his young childhood, Justin realized his personal value lied in his image and faith. Beautiful. As he redefined his professional wardrobe to foster success, he concluded one's appearance, one's appearance produces opportunity. Shaw's Covenant hosts Baltimore's premier clothier experience, cloaking gentlemen in professional garments, assisting in their purpose. With clients across the nation, Shaw's Covenant has been featured in multiple publications and fitted some of the most prominent leaders in the DMV region. Shaw's Covenant redefines what it means to be a true professional in the DMV area with a unique custom suit experience. Next, I wanna introduce to you Sunny Lee of The Dopish. The Dopish was born from Sunny's desire to share her style with the world and she excited to share her baby with you all. She has been hard at work curating a physical online store with stylish, sleek, enticing pieces to help each of her customers exude confidence, sensuality, and class while tastefully displaying the best of your curves. The Dopish is dedicated to the women who is dominant, vivacious, and appreciates the finer things in life. We all do. Every time you visit the Dopish, you are sure to find the latest styles and selected by herself and her team of designers. She prides herself on bringing women the dopest styles and quality materials. Pleasure to have you on today, Sunny, as well on Entrepreneurship Matters. Excellent. So why don't we launch right into the conversation? Uh, both of them are going to show off a little bit. They're going to get to show you their clothes. So we're not going to have a conversation about apparel and not talk about apparel and not see the apparel. So, but first I want to start off with this question, which is, and I'll start with Justin. What inspired you to want to become an entrepreneur? So I'll try my best not to be long-winded because that's a that could be a long-winded question. But in essence, uh, I was 12 years old and my brother was doing network marketing for several years. Um, and if anybody's familiar with network marketing, you know, it's, it's like a sales role, but you're also building teams and organizations. And I saw that as he progressed in the company, he retired at the age of 29 from the government from doing so. And I'm like, well, if he could do that in entrepreneurship, of course I could do something in entrepreneurship. So I gave it a try. I loved it. It was, it was hard, but it gave me the mentality and the um, understanding on what I'm capable of doing in the marketplace, even if I didn't reside there forever. Um, so that's really something that sparked it. He gave me all these personal development books, Think and Grow Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, all that, like when I was 14. So he kind of subtly instilled it in me to go into entrepreneurship. I love it. I love it. And so your brother's 29 retiring. I need to, I need to talk to him. And then he has you looking at him, um, seeing that entrepreneurship is a path, beautiful story. How about you, Sonny? What inspired you to go into entrepreneurship? Uh, well, I never wanted to work for anybody. Um, I was always the type of person that would not really want to hear what anybody else had to say. I wanted to do it my way. And so I think that was one, the main reason why we go into entrepreneurship. So, you know, you, you're like this Frank Sinatra song, you want to do it my way. No, I, I get it. We get so many <laughs> entrepreneurs on 
who talk about really never seeing themselves having a boss other than themselves. And so you're like so many people that we talk to on here. And so I want you to give both of you clearly very successful, love the background of your shop, um, Sunny. Thank um, you. And, but people are saying, how did you do it? So you have an idea, clearly you're smart, clearly you're brilliant, clearly you have a sense of style and ability to, um, to pick out designs, you're creative. But that doesn't mean you're gonna become an entrepreneur. So how did you, what steps did you go through? And you don't have to take us through steps. I write down notes and give them back to the audience in steps. But what were the steps you went through to start your business? I'll start with you, Justin, and then, and then Sunny. So mine was a bit unconventional um, in terms of obviously called Shaw's Covenant. Covenant is a symbolism of faith and I'm a Christian, like I said. So um, I was behind my cubicle, cubicle one day and said, look, God, I got nothing to gain all to lose. If I screw this up by the time I'm 25, I'll just be in like $10,000 in debt. <laughs> so let me have at it. Let me know this is what you want me to do. And then lo and behold, you know, like 30 seconds later, money fell into my lap. So first thing I did was I was like, okay, I'm getting excited. Let me chill out. I'm 22. I don't want to just go do something stupid with this. First, I identified the things that I needed to be able to start. And a lot of times when entrepreneurs start their, or want to start their business, they think they have to have everything in place. It's the last thing, really, uh, because we want it to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect. So first thing was I made sure I had the necessities, like I had the, the manufacturers that will produce the suits. I wanted to make sure I tried the actual garments myself. I wanted to be trained a little bit in it because I had no uh, background experience in this space. Then I created the content before launching to be able to announce that I'm launching a, a custom suit brand. After that, you know, once we launched, I had a system in how I uh, took appointments through a website, scheduled a consultation call, uh, figured out how I wanted to do my sales presentation, which was me coming to their house, serving them drinks, playing music, and picking out every little detail to mm -hmm. their garments and uh, creating a full-blown experience for them. Then I thought about the order fulfillment process and things like that. Uh, but all these things weren't perfect. They were all through trial and error because I thought I had it all set, but ultimately I stumbled along the way. And that's the only way that you get to success, which is always a journey and not a destination. So that was my way of doing it. But ultimately, as I continue to grow, I just know that you had to continue to refine your processes, systems, your passions, uh, what drives you because you can, passion isn't a strategy. You, you actually have to have tactical uh, processes in place and the resources to be able to get to the next level that you want to. Because if you could get there, you would already be there. You need the people in the network uh, attached with you. Love it, love it. Passion isn't a strategy. That's a, um, it's a management quote that um, shows up on a t-shirt. They can give it to you. Let me give you, I guess, I have nine points you talked about. First, you prayed about it um, and really, you know, and really thought that through Two, we'll get into this, but you said money fell into your lap. My eyebrows probably went up and like, what does that mean? But may all that, may that happen to all of us. Three, you got started and really um, talked about really thinking about how you were going to do process improvement in real time. So how are you going to do process improvement while you're engaged in the, um, in the work? Created the content, number four, did research on sales, the content that you were going to create. Six, created the experience. You know, the experience was going to be a part of your brand. Seven, you, um, you started making, figured out the manufacturer, the supply chain. Eight and nine, I talk about, I lump them together, but really trial and error, process improvement, continuous refinement, all great steps for folks. How about you, Sunny? How did you go from... You don't, you don't want a boss. You're going to sing in the Frank Sinatra song, My Way. And you say, I'm going, because you have two businesses, correct? You have a hair salon. I have three. Three. Okay. Yeah. What, what are the three businesses? I only featured one. Give me the three. So I have a hair salon, which I was at when we first um, joined. It's right yeah. around. So I've, I've been doing hair for over 15 years. Um, I decided that I wanted to sell hair. So I opened um, the online store. And then I, I opened the physical location for the beauty bar. Excellent, excellent. So how and, did you go about starting your business? What were the steps you went through? You have a great idea. Clearly you're creative, a lot of talent. 
that doesn't mean you get a business like you have and three right. businesses. So how did you do that? Well, um, it was a lot of trial and error, as you said. Um, I did a lot of failing at first and then, you know, you just got to keep going. So um, I started this business in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, wow. I funded it from my other business, which is the, the beauty bar. Uh, I put about 80 grand into my business, wow. starting off with as far as the, uh, the decor and everything. And um, I'm, I'm really into clothing, but my main thing is like interior design. So mm -hmm. anything with design, I think that, you know, it inspires me to do more. But um, as far as my business, I feel like I could kind of, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm getting, um, you know, a little um, nervous a little bit. Okay. Oh, but, you're good. Uh, you're good. <laughs> I don't normally do it, do this uh, panelist thing. So this is my first time. But um yeah, I'm, in, I'm really into like clothing and styling and, um, you know, making women feel good and beautiful. So, you know, that's one thing that inspires me to keep going. Yeah, and that's excellent. And I, I took down four points. One, I love how you started in the middle of the pandemic and you saw sort of opportunity in the midst of where many people were not seeing opportunity. Right. And taking advantage of that. Second, you talked about the investment, and we're, that's going to lead me to my next question. Because uh, we're going, we're receiving so many questions. Hold on, I'm going to tell everyone how to continue to participate. Third, you fueled your passion, which is in design, interior design, and incorporated that into your business. And fourth, then making trial and error, right? So I, I appreciate um, both of your honesty and authenticity that you, well, you, well, it looks like you have it all figured out. You're <laughs> continuing to learn and grow in that. Let me tell everyone how to participate because the questions are already coming in off of Facebook. <laughs> so those of you who are listening on the phone, you can text your questions in 22333, type J-H-U-W-L in the message. I'll get all those questions. Those of you in Zoom, you can put continue to put them in the chat. Um, all of you who are watching on Facebook, which I know is the vast majority of you, you can continue to put your questions in the chat on Facebook and I get all of those into the chat and I will weave them into the conversation, I promise. So the question that we received off of Facebook actually was about your ability to raise capital. And we know capital comes in many different forms, customers, contracts, and um, cash. But how are you able to build capital to start your business. So Justin, how'd you do that? So again, mom was uh, a tad bit unconventional because I was 22 years old. And to fund this business specifically, um, I had gotten into like a, I think like a car accident or something, like a month, it, I had the idea in June and I got into an accident like in May, at the end of May or something like that. And then I had got a call immediately after that prayer that granted me just a thousand dollars and so my that was just sheer out of luck and faith I was like wow okay this works um but you know as time went on to progress um I actually that's all I used to start my business because I didn't have to have a storefront I was selling suits out the trunk I was just needed a vehicle <laughs> I just needed the the swatch books and everything I negotiated to be able to get all that almost for free basically um and then I just took it from there but now to kind of answer because I know I want something that people can actually take tangibly yeah um having credit and networking is very 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 essential um, because I didn't have great credit at the age of 22 years old, um, but having a full-time job and good credit, uh, when you start a business, you can easily leverage whether it's loans or grants through other different entities, because in the state of Maryland or really anywhere, uh, people want to see you succeed and grow. You just have to know the appropriate individuals to do so and uh, reach out to your local government, whether it's through the SBA Small Business Association, you can do that. Mm -hmm. 
or from family and friends that truly value, you know, your, your purpose and what you believe is the next step in your venture. Um, but you got to have a plan along with it. You can't be someone that says, hey, I need $1,500 to start my car washing business. They're like, well, what are you going to do with it? You need to have a concise plan on how you're going to do, uh, how you're going to utilize the money so they can get a return on their investment if it's a loan or if it's just a seed of goodwill so they know that you're actually using the money responsibly. I love how you said, when you said a pot of money came into my lap, I was thinking, oh man, he got tens of thousands of dollars and i love how so approachable that is you got a thousand dollars and you turned it into a business um which is beautiful you also talked about that friends and family round every venture every company goes through a friends and family round of money raising and so great tips for people you know usually those are your first customers how about you sonny how did you go about raising capital for your many businesses. How did you do that? Okay, so my first business, which is it, the Dope Beauty Bar, um, I, I started online and with very little um, capital. Um, and then I had an angel investor who put money into it so they saw my vision. And then um, I opened it there. I hired a few employees. Um, they just came along, I guess, because of my following and um, I guess I inspired them. So they wanted to come. And so I was I raised money that way. And then I put money into Dope Dish, which is right around the corner. Um, the business um, is doing really good for it being a year and a half now. Yeah. So um, and being as though I started in the middle of the pandemic. It was really, um, uh, we had a lot of customers because nothing was kind of open mm -hmm. then. And then, you know, um, during the summer months is kind of a lot more busy. And then, um, but it gets a little slow in the winter. But once it, once, you know, the spring and summer picks back up, we're able to, you know, get more capital to invest into more marketing and advertisement as well. No, that's great. And, and what you just said, you know, People buy into your vision, right? And you talked about your people wanting to, I always say, people always want to be a part of a moving train, even if they don't know where the train's going. They right. Just, they just know it's <laughs> going to take them somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so I love how you talked about the angel investors. Many people have never heard of what that means. What, what is an angel investor? Just someone. It's just someone that wants to invest into your dream. Someone they may not even want the money back. They just, they may just want to give it to you because they see that you're working and you're trying so hard that they want to see you do good. Yes, yes, absolutely. I want to stick with you for a second, Sonny, because you talked about COVID, right? And, and I love for, and someone asked this question, um, what did COVID, how did COVID shift your business? Can you even talk to us about why during COVID did you think? I should start my business and how has maybe coming out of COVID have you shifted? And then Justin, I'd love to ask you the same question. So Sandy, what was, what, what made you say it's COVID? I'm going to start another. Well, business. I didn't have anything to wear. <laughs> you had everything to wear. All right. And everything <laughs> all of clothes. And I was yeah. like, you know, this is yeah. weird. Like, you know, people still need loungewear you know, to be in the house, you know, so, and then that was a good time because nothing was really going on for me to really put the time into building what I actually want. So mm -hmm. uh, when I got this building, it was like, it, it no one even probably paid it any attention. So, um, you know, I have like a big imagination. So it took me about two and a half months and some, um, yeah, like about two and a half months to get it going. And then I had a, a big um, what was it? Grand, grand opening. Yeah, I had mm -hmm. a big grand opening and like uh, PNC Bank, well, my girlfriend from PNC Bank, she helped me with it a lot, um, brought a lot of people out and we raised a lot of money during the grand opening. So mm -hmm. that kind of motivated me a lot to keep, really keep going. I invested all the money back into my business. And I think as long as you, don't spend your capital and you yeah. stay put to, to your business, I think that the business will keep growing. I think that if you go in and you try to look good and do the same thing, 
it's not going to happen. You have to really focus on, you know, the fact that, you know, this is what I love to do anyway. Um, I think that I, I can still wear. Oh. There's a guy outside saying sunny. Hi, I'm on a Zoom meeting. Sunny. Oh my God. We have, I'm sorry, we have. It's okay, you're really in business. You're in business. <laughs> we completely understand that. I love what you said though. I love what you said about how your own personal, you knew that people wanted to do that. Um, yeah. People wanted those clothing. And yeah. then your point about reinvesting in the business even ties into the capital because you could care Go like out and spend it, spend right. the money. <laughs> and then you wonder how is your business not capitalized? Exactly. Beautiful, so I think that a lot of people, um, I think that a lot of people, instead of reinvesting into their business, where they fall short is that they'll go out and try to look like it's making more than what it is. Yeah. So instead, I, you know, I just try to put everything into back into the business. I don't spend any of the money. I don't even, actually, I don't pay myself for this business until I feel like I get to the point where I'm like completely straight, where, you know, it can basically run itself. I can get more employees and, you know, be able to, you know, create more jobs and stuff like that. So no, no, absolutely, absolutely. Great points you just made. Uh, and no apologies necessary. We know you are running a business, so that that is fine. People are gonna come in the door. Um, good problem to have. Good problem to have. That's good. That's good. But you have customers. Um, how about you, um, Justin? How did COVID shift your business? How did it change your business? You've gone to people's homes, so that may have completely yeah. shifted. Yeah. So you know, people were typically running away from having a storefront in space during COVID, but I had to get one because I yeah. couldn't go into anyone's home. They didn't feel comfortable with it, which I completely understood. I'm like, to be honest, I didn't want you coming in my house either. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so at first I was like, yeah, but I don't want the overhead and all that other stuff. Um, and I didn't want to have where I had to be in here in certain hours and all those different things. But I realized that I set the rules and I'm like, I'm by, I can do by appointment only. And I struggled to find places where I can meet clients in between. So I used to try to meet them in like apartment complex clubhouses and, and these different wow. places. And like, I'm like, yeah, we could meet somewhere. But then some people would catch on and be like, you got to go. But, you know, so I ended up reaching out to my realtor to find out where I can lease a good space. And fortunate for me, when I found the space, it was a dollar a square foot because of the pandemic. And, you know, I'm almost right here by the harbor. So wow. it was like a ridiculous steal. <laughs> so I use that as an opportunity. And after that, I realized that people love a business that has a, a, a space because yeah. my ignorant side is like, yeah, because I know where to come find you if something's wrong. <laughs> Right. But on the other side, it, should, it makes them feel like th this is really a business. It's a proof yeah. of that you're actually a company and not just like, a, you know, a, I'm doing this in my house type yeah. uh, experience. And so through that, my business actually grew exponentially in the middle of the pandemic. So where most people were afraid, I was probably doing two. I, over the past, the average growth rate that I had is 88.5% year over year since I've been in business. So that in so good. Yeah, in 2020, I believe it was 116%, if I remember correctly. So in the middle of the pandemic, even though I was closed for like four months, I made it all back in like two months after that and just kind of took off from there. That is beautiful. So beautiful and so inspiring for you to... Um... For you to relate that because sometimes people think like in the middle of the storm there's no sunshine and there is sun in the, in, the, in the middle of the storm i love for both of you to talk about and sunny don't worry about people walking in front of the camera that's okay it's a you're in the store so let's get to this question of how did you build your clientele that question has come in a number of different forms from the viewers and so how did you build a following because um, clearly there are many people that have a store there are many people that have companies, but the differentiator is you have people buying, right? It's your clientele. How did you do that? How did you build your clientele? Um, I would say online because I have an online presence mm -hmm. um, on my personal page. I have almost 500,000 followers. How many? So, um, almost 500,000. You have 500,000. <laughs> <laughs> <Half a million. laughs> so I didn't have 
really a really <laughs> hard problem. You should have broadcast <laughs> on your page. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really have a, a bad I mean a problem with um getting a lot of customers because people come here from like everywhere to come see the place um I mean I was always really stylish so you know all you gotta do is put it together and they're like oh yeah I want to see it like I love it you know so sometimes um you're just selling the look you if yeah. you focus on selling the look instead of selling the product you'll be fine yeah, and you're right. People are looking for like the look. And when they find a style or a, a designer or a store where they love the product, people, I mean, I go to certain stores because I like the product. I like what they sell. And so you're right. Then 500,000 followers is also a good um, good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, I have right. a lot on my personal page to, yeah. to bring the traffic over to the Dopish page. So um, we are currently at um, 4,000 followers on the Dopish page in one year, so. Wow, wow, congratulations to you too. I mean, just Thank huge, you. so inspiring, both of you. Uh, how, how about you? How did you build your clientele, Justin? Everybody wanted a Justin Shaw, Shaw uh, special. I see the guys, <laughs> they wanted to wear Justin Shaw. It's like, it's the new thing. So how did you build your clientele? So I have, 10 million followers. No, I don't. 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 So for me, I just went back to what I knew from network marketing. I'm like, look, you got to prospect, you got to be out there, you got to meet people, you need to sell it. So for me, I was in a networking event or a happy hour four or five times out the week because I got to meet somebody. I, as a, a, a husband, I'm like, look, you got to provide. You out here doing this business, it's great, but you got you to come back home with some closing. Yeah. <laughs> so I would network very heavy, learning and studying who my real market is um, because I started to realize over time, I'm like, okay, it's great. I'm going to all these networking events, but is my client truly here? So I started yes. to identify who my ideal model is as a client, you know, so I broke all those down and I said, okay, how do they think? Where do they reside? Do they hang out at Harbor East and Lock Bar and the Bygone? Or are they at the Center Club? Or are they at the Country Club? Instead of going to, you know, Joe Schmo's networking event, you know, that's $20 and you're meeting, you know, my, the nature of business, I have to meet people that make at least 80,000 and up, right? So that's the only time I know people are actually going to be in that space. So I have to end up connecting with people. And then I also do something what I call tap rooting. So an another network marketing tactic where when you meet an individual, you make sure you can add value back to them and you nurture that relationship, even if they can't become a client, because they'll know somebody that yeah, can be right. your client. That's and right. so through that, they will be the a salesman. So I know of all the things. <laughs> all, yes. yes. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'm all about networking because I know I have that kind of personality matter. Fun fact. I basically got fired from every job because everybody thought I was like a one, like, like I was, a, I was, a, I was very charismatic. They thought I was flirting with everybody, but I'm just a charismatic person that got along with everybody. And so I'm like, I'll just use what I identify as my strength and what they identified as my weakness to my advantage. And so I ended up just using my personality and networking capabilities to kind of build my brand. And um, now I'm tapping into actual marketing tactics that are bringing in leads on a daily basis where I don't even have to do that as much anymore on top of several referrals that I get them off. I like, I like what you just said, because there may be somebody else there out here who's getting fired from every job they have, but they, but the, but the weakness that they're seeing could be your strength in, mm -hmm. in, in another vein. And so there's not, it's not, you know, your charisma allows for you to make connections with those you're working with and build a clientele. Love it. Um, Sunny, I've got to get to this question, which has come a little bit farther down, but I'm going to give it to you now. I'm going to give it to both of you. People are asking, where is your store located? So where are you located? So I'm in the middle of Federal Hill on Charles Street. Um, I don't know if everybody heard about the watershed, but it's like two doors down. Oh, yeah. um, I'm right, right next to Insomnia Cookies. 
So I'm like, it's a lot of foot traffic here. We get anywhere from like six to 1200 people a day that walk down the street here. Um, Federal Hill is like, I don't know if everybody knows about Federal Hill, but Federal Hill is always crowded. So that's why I chose this place. So what's your address if someone's putting it in their GPS? I am at 1057 South Charles Street. 1057. And that's your that's your clothing store. And where's your and where's your hair salon located? So it's one block over and three blocks down, 1459 Light Street. Okay. I was gonna make sure we plug both of them so we don't don't miss. How about you, Justin? Where is your shop located? Yeah, so I'm located downtown, right across the street from Mercy Hospital. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll give you the address, but it's by appointment only, so don't come and knock because I might not be here. Uh, go okay. to our website, <laughs> but the address is 326 St. Paul uh, Street. Excellent. Love it. Love it. Let me ask this question because both of you talked about, um, about marketing. Um, and clearly, I'm going to start with you, Sonny. Because you have, we have gotten so many comments, like 500,000, wow. Uh, you may have like 5,000, 500,000, 4,000, uh, 500, 4,000 after this. But what, what marketing <laughs> considerations did you make for your business? How did you think about marketing? Um, for my company? business? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, it was a lot. So I did a lot of... Um, online uh what are those things ads and um just just networking going to parties meeting people and people are i'm kind of popular so you know i would travel a lot to and, say the you least know, you're not just you're not a little popular <laughs> <laughs> so i would you know travel and meet people and give out my cards and put out flyers and do um just any kind of advertisement, like anything that I could do to kind of put it out. I have models that come in and promote on their pages as well. That come oh, in, they try on our clothes. Um, my assistant and favorite employee, um, she went to the store to get me something to drink. <laughs> but oh. she, she's amazing. Um, she is an art major at Morgan State university oh, and um she is like she does everything from lookbooks to manage my website so just having someone um like her is just like the most amazing thing when it comes to um being a business owner you definitely need somebody that you know is computer savvy that can just you know help you with everything you know write little uh pitches for um, marketing and create flyers and stuff so I think that that's an um, that plays a big role yeah no and then like someone said go Morgan so when she comes back tell somebody shot yeah I'll shouting her out, shouting her out. <laughs> yeah she'll be back in like two seconds yeah. okay no problem we'll shout her out when she comes back um Justin how about you how did you go about thinking about marketing for your business so funny thing is originally I at first I didn't believe my clients were on Instagram and all that other stuff because I'm like, they're out there making business transactions and mergers and acquisitions. They don't got time to be swiping on Instagram. Um, but now that I have it where the client base refers a lot of individuals to me, I have started to focus on marketing as of right now. So I started doing marketing campaigns at the top of May and they're really starting to get a lot of traction. So thanks to the Goldman Sachs program, small business, and now you know, since I was a small business. 14, right? Yep. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I actually implemented some of the tactics that they put there. So um, just to give somebody some tips on actually what I did, you know, first I start off with awareness ads saying like, hey, I'm Charles Covenant, custom clothiers for purpose driven general, make sure they're possible, presentable, producing results, blah, blah, blah. And then that will be able to funnel them to my actual page. Then after that, I had retargeting ads go back out to touch on the pain points of my clients. And I have two different audiences that I talk to. I talk to wedding clients and I also talk to what I call the corporate gentlemen. So those are the people that come back and buy a bunch of stuff at, like back to back. So I created two different types of ads for both of them. And then I created landing pages and email campaigns to funnel them into the emails. And then I started creating surveys and all these different engaging portions 
because I know that it takes roughly 10 to 14 touch points to be able to convert a client in my space. Okay. So I had to constantly be in their face. And so from that, by the time I get to that 10 or 14th touch point, I know I can say, hey, schedule this discovery conversation with me so I can learn how I can assist you in developing your professional wardrobe. And then from there, you know, I take care of the rest through the sales process. So it's really leveraging where you believe your client truly is, whether it's on yeah. social media and newspapers or wherever and marketing in that space and actually vending in the places that you believe they're going to be at. I love how you just said that. I have um, um, one of my mentors, son, who's like a little brother to me, NFL, and they all get custom suits, right? They all, it's a, so like thinking about where, she buying a whole lot in that shop. Um, Sonny, she goes, she goes, you know, I've seen four outfits go past the screen. So she, she found a lot today. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute, Sonny. Yeah, you're on mute. He actually <laughs> just came from my other shop and uh, purchased a custom made wig as well. So, she, so she's buying, she, today is a buying day for her. I love it. I love it. It's a buying day for her. It's a buying day. I love it. Let me ask this question, which both of you just mentioned but about building your teams. And so Sunny, you talked about young lady, give us her name again, so we can just lift her up. Um, the her name is one. Alina. Alina, okay. So Alina is on your team, a part of your team. How do you go about building your team? And what's your approach to adding people? Because you can't do it alone. Right. Um, you know, you may be the face, you may be the person who's out front, but every great person has a team behind them. So how did you, what was your approach in building your team? Well, I, I definitely try to hire people that's more geared toward what I need done. So if they're in like marketing or if they're in advertisement, then I hire them as an employee and that's something that they can bring to the table. Um, I don't like hiring anybody who's just going to sit here and babysit because I don't need a babysitter. So if yeah. you're coming on to my team, I need for you to be working, ready. And here she is. Hi, say hi, Alina. Alina. <laughs> what are you doing? She's bragging on you. She's bragging on you, Alina. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just, as long as like they, whatever they're going, like most of the time I hire like school kids or someone mm -hmm. that's in college that's um, doing something towards what I need done for my business. So, um, and we have like hourly and um, salary rates as well in commission. I, I love that. And I do the same. We have, I think we have nine interns, college and high school interns, and they just bring a freshness to the work and they just have a, a joy, which is, I think just a beautiful. Um, love how you said that. Justin, how about you? How are you thinking about building your team? Yeah, so um, it's funny that you actually say this because I'm actually studying this to a different level than what I used to. And first, I take an internal um, understanding of what I truly need and where I lack the most, where I can actually get something off that I don't have to do in order to make it work. Um, and me and my wife joke about this. When it comes to acquiring somebody that has value, to be on your team, you have to give value back, right? Yeah, so do. what we used to call benefits, I joke around, I call it amenities now, right? <laughs> because a lot of people in our generation now, it's not about just going to work, getting a check and leaving. They're like, no, I want to have self-care days. I want to be able to have this stipend of extra funds, or I can give you um, resources to a therapist or to a massage therapist, all these little different amenities that they can tack on, working from home, all those different things, because you want to be a, a value to them and them not just be a value to you, because what you pour into them, so they'll kind of give back to you. Um, and then after that, you know, when you had that set up, you have to create what I like to call process mapping, right? Because you can hire somebody, but if you don't have a methodology that they can follow, then you're going to be babysitting, right? So yeah. you want to know, like, if they're going to be doing order fulfillment, what are the steps in place that they have to do? And always talk to an attorney on handbooks and all those other different things and using those resources, whether it's like Gusto or Zenefits, to be able to help you um, manage on how to build that team and payroll, because all those things matter because you one you don't want nobody talking bad about your brand from an internal perspective yeah. and then also you want it to be able to flow even if you're not there so if you have it where you know if you're getting an order in this is the steps in the process they won't ever have to ask you a question you could be gone for a week and your yeah. business will still produce income and they'll be able to have the freedom and creativity to add their own little touches to it too 
So basically having structure and organization in the midst of all of it. No, absolutely. And you know, it's um, one of my friends who's an entrepreneur talked about, you got to decide whether you want to create a job for yourself or you want to create a business. Yep. The business requires that you be able to lead and it continue to run. Um, so really uh, elevating. I love you making that point. Um, Sunny, tell us, can you, um, someone put this question in on uh, Facebook, which is how as an entrepreneur, would you advise someone to think about approaching finances and pricing, right? Everything that's on those walls, hanging on those racks, just in everything, they have a price. Mm -hmm. And so how do you, how did you think about approaching finances and pricing for your business? Uh, well, I go through an app that has like over 5,000 um, vendors on it. And so it'll tell you what you should sell it for so you can make your profit back. This is the first time I've ever heard of this. What's the name of that? What's the name of that? I can't give it out. Come on. I, come oh, on. I, you I'm can't give it out. I'm probably going to put it. <laughs> on, I'm probably going to uh, just put it um, as, as like a something that I sell on my website. But, oh, this um, app is something you're going to be selling. No, it's it's like a secret because I, a lot of people don't have it. <laughs> Everybody doesn't have like the same clothes that I have. So the app, you can get clothes from like um, uh, the UK, uh, what is it? Uh, it uh, Italy and Or oh, it China. tells you how to wear the best prices to buy it from. No, the best quality. Because I'm, I'm really the best quality. quality. Okay. Yeah. The I'm They're really going to say where's quality. the best quality. And then does it tell you back? This is fascinating. We're going to research this. Somebody, exactly on the team, how much we can sell it somebody on the team is going to research this. So it, you, it tells you what to sell it for. Yeah. It tells you what you, what you would sell it for and to make a, a good profit. This is fascinating. This is the first <laughs> time I've heard of this map. We don't know I the name of it. I can it tell is it. Powerful. It is a powerful tool, clearly, because we're not disclosing it. But entrepreneurship matters. But I, I love, I love that you even told us that this thing exists because we didn't even know that before. Yeah. Before today, I was, um, I was today's years old when I learned this. So, Justin, how about you? How do you, how do you set your pricing for your business? Right. Okay. So I'll, again, I'll try not to be long winded because I have fun with stuff. You like have an this. app too. Oh, so, I mean, I have an app, but I don't use it, but it's so, okay. So for instance, I don't use this app, but it's called cost margin. So what you do is you just put in however much your product costs and then the price. And then if you want to do like a 2.5 markup, it'll give you the amount, right? So it's, it's a simple like cost margin <laughs> thing, but I don't use that because my uh, manufacturers actually sent me like an Excel sheet where I can input because I got like 10,000 different fabrics in here at all different price points. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way that I determine exactly how much my products cost, I start off with the cost of goods, meaning, you know, the material, uh, the production of it, the shipping mm -hmm. of it, right? Now that a lot of people only calculate that stuff. What they don't factor in is you got to pay employees on top of that. You also have to pay for additional packaging, or you also have to pay for your overhead. You also have to pay for, it was another one that was very important in my mind. It was enough marketing, marketing. How much does it cost to sell this Seven. product? Maybe it costs like $6 worth of ad spend to sell a $25 product that was $10. And so that costs you $16 to actually sell that good. And your profit is what? Uh, $9, right? So knowing those different things. So for me specifically, I also factor in alterations with my suits because I take care of all alterations free of charge. So they don't have to go through that headache. So even though, you know, I pay X amount and then I, you know, charge for this amount, I have to factor in the actual professional services that come along with it, which could cost me hundreds of dollars on top of that too. So it's almost like a convenience fee on top of that. Uh, but there is one other thing I do want to tell all entrepreneurs that helped me out tremendously. There's a book called Profit First by helping entrepreneurs always pay themselves first because so many times in business, we want to keep all the money in, in the business. Sunny could do that because she got three. So it don't even mean nothing to her at this point. Sunny said, I don't take a paycheck. Yeah, she because she she already she good already. She good already. Yeah, she good. Oh, my, <laughs> other business, my other business has fooled myself, but 
this business, like I said, is it's brand new and I'm trying to put right. more in for it than take out. So I want to see my full profit here. No, I hear you. Before I, I start you. spending. No, I yeah. And, and so with profit first, they eat, actually teach you how to divvy up your um your money. So the cost of goods, your market, your um business expenses, your personal pay, which is actually what you pay yourself um for the work that you do in the business, and then of course your profit. And so at different stages, whether it's a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, a million dollars there are different tiers to it, to how you allocate that money to each portion of your business. So you can scale, you can take care of your family and all those other different things. So it's called Profit First. Excellent, excellent. I love that book um, you just mentioned. Let me let me let us all do a little bit of a, um, a tour of your shops, if that's a possible or. So Sunny, I know you drink it. So don't worry, I'm gonna give you two seconds to get ready for me, Sunny. I'm gonna go to Justin first, then I'm coming to you, Sunny, to show us some of the fashions that people buy, clearly they're buying a lot in your shop today. Um, Justin, show us some of your suits, some of the things that you make suits for, suits for women. No, just suits for men. If they wanted to have a male contour, I can do that. I'm in the process of actually making suits for women as well too. Because uh, okay. y'all y'all, need them and y'all be banging at my door. When you going so I'm, I'm gonna get every to it. I'm uh, get to you it. appreciate for all of the, the guys they never make the no we do need them yeah yeah it, it's it's one of the most hardest things to do i'll I just know, let you know that. Yes, yes. <laughs> so real quick um i have a few and i'm gonna show you the swatch books and these are actually <laughs> some of my personal suits so first you got this burgundy uh oh, jacket really with a nice. peak lapel I have Panthers inside of it because this was uh, for Black Lives Matter. And you know, oh, when um, um, Chadwick uh, Bozeman died, Bo Bo I forgot his last name. We know who Bozeman. I'm talking about. Yeah, yes. uh, had passed. I wanted to make sure I dedicated it to him with the Panthers in the inside and I also put under the collar Black Lives Matter. So- Oh, was, I love it. I love it. Yeah, Patrick yeah. Bozeman. Yeah, and then this is actually a suit I made for a groom that was, well, a, a husband that was renewing his vows for 20 years in Vegas, and I had flew out to him for him to actually wear this for his wedding, so he got this yeah, really cool. nice suit, of course, with a paisley, et cetera, et cetera, and then he also paired it with these kind of like golden uh, trousers as well, uh, and then just so you guys can kind of see... Yeah, uh -oh. drop something. You don't worry okay. about it. Okay. <laughs> These are the swatches they actually select from first when it comes to designing their suit because they, obviously they're not made the second they're here. So they get to select from here. This is like our oh. Sorrento collection. And then lastly, I mean, not lastly, but this is all I'll show because we'll be here all day if I give you the full presentation. But this is the linings that they can pick from as well. Oh, so, isn't you know, they beautiful. Have, Yep, from wine glasses, poker, cigars, uh, the bodega. I mean, any and everything is in here that they can do. So there's a lot of different options that they can pick from. I try to make sure I minimize the options so I don't overwhelm them because you could be in here all day trying to pick out <laughs> some stuff. No, so that's just everybody saying, wow, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. So, yeah. That, that's just a little taste of it. And then of course we have a bar that, you know, you can get a drink from. <laughs> oh, in your, in your business? Yep. So. Okay, can you show it, show it to us, show it to us. So <laughs> I'm going to show you some of the drinks because I'm actually moving the clubhouse. Okay, the you don't want us to show. Months. Okay, don't Yeah, worry. so like, actually, I'm actually promote this business. Uh, so this is actually one of my 10KSB alumni's alcohols that he um, sells in his liquor store, Elon Blyden. Oh man, I can't remember the name of his store. I'm gonna put it in the comments at some point when I find it, but it's really, really nice. This is a aged rum. It, it's really good. And it has like a rubber top where it actually looks like it's dripping off of the actual uh, bottle itself. So really nice, really nice. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Sunny, Sunny, you took us outside. Sunny, you took us outside. Oh, you wanna show us the outside, okay. You're on mute. You're on mute, Sonny. <laughs> Beautiful job. Oh, all right. Okay. I see why you went outside. I see why we went outside. I love it. I love it. Oh, take yourself off mute so we can talk to you while we do this. Can you come off mute, Sonny? 
Excellent. Beautiful store. Isn't it beautiful? So beautiful. And so what size, um, Sunny, can you come off mute? What sizes do you have in your store? Ooh, oh, okay, here we are. Oh, let me turn it around. Um, I'm trying to turn it around. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. We're able to see. We're able to see oh, right. it. Okay. Um, what what sizes do you have within the store? We have extra small to three X. Wow. So you have for That's everybody. Good. That's yeah. good. That's a, That range is huge. Um, show us some of your best. What's your best selling outfit? Well, we sell a lot of bathing suits. <laughs> These a are bathing suits. Okay. So we have some really cute ones, but we have some really uh, risque well, you ones. You can't get us taken off the air. So we, we can only see, let's see the really cute ones. Don't, don't, don't get us taken off the air. Oh, okay. No, we're not gonna, <laughs> not gonna, so we have some really nice ones like this. Okay. And those sell a lot. So we have those are like our best sellers here. We have like really nice like dresses that you can wear out. Oh, beautiful, beautiful and red dress. We have oh, we have accessories. Oh, I love those earrings. You about to get an order earrings. right now. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm going to order right now. We have right this now. dress. It's like one of the, well, actually, this one was the, the best seller. We have one left. Oh, it's so beautiful. The colors are beautiful. And then that one at the top that we, um, the money, the money dress. Oh, no. That, oh, that's beautiful too. Everybody really likes pretty. that one. The colors have, are so happy. We have like really nice. Uh, oh, isn't that uh, cute? Oh, it's adorable. Thank you. And oh, like two pieces and shirt dresses. We have all kinds. So this one is like a. Um, I love that dress. It, well, I, I can't. Let me show you it to you on the mannequin. It looks better out here on the mannequin. So. Here it is. Oh, I love that dress. It's cute. It's so cute. And so can people... And then we have her that's a death. This it. is actually sold out. This is the last one. Oh, wow. Wow. Beautiful pieces, Sunny. Beautiful pieces. What someone asked is, you go up to 3X and you go as small as extra small. And yeah. then what's the what's the largest size you go up to, Justin? You're custom, right? Yeah, I'm custom. So any any okay. and everybody, except okay. except uh, children, except okay. children. We don't do children. Okay, no worries, no worries. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do like little grooms, like little um, ring bears soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I, you know, only thing is, I it's I could do them. It's just my own personal philosophy. I'm like. In my mind, I'm like, I'm not spending a thousand dollars on a suit that a kid's gonna grow out of in two minutes. So I, the second I get past that, I will actually start selling them. But I've been having a hard time convincing myself to do it. <laughs> okay, but you know, customer based, customer based. Let me ask you this, both of you. People want to know how do they get in contact with you, Sonny? Give us all your dot coms. We know how to get in. We know where to find you. But what? How can people get in touch with you if they wanted to come by your stores and? purchase from you what are they what are your dot coms and your ads okay so um we're at the dopish t-h-e-d-o-p-e-i-s-h and our uh what what else did you need your web your website is the dopish. oh the website is the dopish t-h-e-e dopish dot com excellent excellent how about you, Justin? What's your website? So everything is Shaw's Covenant, S-H-A-W-S-C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T. That's on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, the website, shawscovenant.com. 
Um, and then my personal is classic man, Sean. Okay. Let me say this. Both of you are so inspiring. We are so proud, so thankful that we had you on here. And I'm going to claim you. you. Your best days are still ahead of you. And your, <laughs> and your yesterdays have been very good. So tell us what's next. What should we anticipate on the horizon? Sonny, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start following you. So it'll be 500,001. Um, <laughs> maybe two of us, two of us, two of us. Um, so what, what can we expect next? What's next from you? Um, I want to definitely open up a sh another dope-ish. Um, I'm not sure what area. I think I want to go to another city, um, maybe Atlanta um, or Miami, somewhere like that. Um, but that's that's what's next for um, dope-ish. I want to do like a, a billboard. I want to do um, some more marketing advertisement. I want to build a, a bigger team. I want to have like more models, um, just, you know, expand, basically. We're so glad you started in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. Great things come out of Baltimore. And so really, really exciting. I, whatever you have in your mind, I, I believe you will set out to do because you're doing amazing things. Justin, how about you? What's, what's next for you? What's next on the horizon? Yeah, so actually right now I am transitioning out of Baltimore to like the PG area because a lot of my clients come from Northern Virginia, DC, PG, and then parts of them come from Baltimore. So I'm trying to meet everybody in the middle. Um, but in terms of long term, well, somewhat long term, through next three to five years, I'm actually going to create this into more so of a social enterprise, almost like a country club type experience where we're going to buy acres of land in the middle of nowhere, build it out, have it where you have a bar, you have the, the, the restaurant experience, you have the clothier shop in the front, wedding, uh, look, uh, excuse me, wedding space, venue space, driving range on one side, golf course on the other, overlooking lakes. And we're already working heavy with the team to be able to develop this kind of uh, vision that I have that we I've documented and all this stuff. So we're building and trying to make sure everything is intact right now. So we had the opportunity to expand cigar lounges, blah, blah, blah. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot, but it's going to be well, Justin, huge. Justin and Sunny, when y'all are looking for the, the, the capital and the investors, please look at all of us as investors <laughs> in these, these big businesses. I believe in both of you. So beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Let me Thank wrap you. us up and then we're going to head out. I know you're going to a graduation, Sunny. Just yes. going. Um, well, congratulations to whoever is graduating. Thank you, my nephew. Oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Everyone, tune in next week for more Entrepreneurship Matters. We're going to have two entrepreneurs in the salon industry. You don't want to miss it. Follow us on JH Connects on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you to our community partners, Johns Hopkins University, Johns Hopkins Health System, Hopkins Local, the Mayor's Office of Small Minority Women on Business, the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program and Bloomberg Philanthropies. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, 